Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Abdul Al Kamen, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to manage contract expiry dates. Uh, this is really helpful for those working in HR, uh, but the concepts here are also useful in other applications as well. So, uh, in a contract, uh, normally we would know the contract starting date, right? So, if we assume that to be April 8, 2020, and then uh, under contract duration, we uh, put that in months. Basically, uh, we're going to put 12. So this is a 12 month contract. And uh, to calculate the contract ending date, we use a function called edate. Now, this function is going to give you the date after a certain number of months based on the starting date. So the edate is going to ask you for a starting date. And we know that the start date is uh, our contract starting date. And then uh, it's also asking for the number of months. Now, the number of months can be positive or negative. If it's positive, it goes forward in time. If it's negative, it goes back in time. So we know that the uh, contract duration is our months here. Yeah, so we select that and we hit enter. And as you can see here, we get the a number. And this is basically a serial number for the date that is the indicated number of months after the starting date. So basically the uh, calculation here is correct. It is only in the wrong format. So you need to change the format from a general, which is no, uh, basically no format has been applied to date. Okay. And as you can see here, we see uh, that uh, the contract is one year exactly after our starting date. So once contract in the date is calculated, um, you can always calculate, you know, or keep this, you know, calculation live always, uh, which is basically the days to the contract ending date. Okay, so how many days left in the contract? So um, we uh, basically subtract the contract ending date minus today's date. Okay. So as you can see here also, uh, we uh, inherited the uh, format of the other columns used in this calculation. So basically the calculation here is correct. Again, uh, it is only in the wrong format. Okay, so we uh, remove that and keep it general. So as you can see here, we get the number of days to contract in this 362 days. Now, um, in some organization, they prefer the contract ending date to be the end of the month where the contract ending date occurs. So uh, to, to, to do that, you can use a different function and that function is called end of month. So we change the function here to end of month. And what the, uh, f this function is going to do is basically very similar to the edate function. So you give it a starting date and you give it the number of months. Uh, the number of months is here 12 and we basically hit enter. And as you can see here now, instead of getting exactly 12 months from our starting date, we're getting the end of month where the day of the contract ending date after 12 months occurs. All right. So as we saw, the contract ending date was April 8. So it is April 8, but the end of month will shift that to the end of month. So this is how you manage expiry dates in uh, a table like this. Okay. So this is the first step. Okay. Now, so what if we need a reminder, um, some sort of a flag to uh, remind us that uh, it is time to review the contract or the contract is near its end. So we can use conditional formatting to do that. But before we do that, just let's add other information here for other contract. We can say probably something that occurred last year. We can say, um, yeah, 20, uh, 2019. And we went 12 months. So uh, it is uh, so it finishes at the end of this month. So we have 19 days left, basically. OK, so uh, we can use conditional formatting to do that. So to do conditional formatting correctly, um, we select the whole table like this using the black arrow that you see at the corner. And then we go to conditional formatting. And from here, you need to design a custom conditional formatting. So you go to new rule and from here, and don't let the custom conditional format in words scare you. It is very simple. So you go to uh, use a formula to determine which cells to format. Now, this statement here is very important. So, you know, the conditional formatting will be applied 
when the function that you are writing here results in a true result. So the functions that you need to put in here must be a logical function basically. So it, the result has to be either true or false. We're gonna check today's date. So basically today, let's say the contract ending date, which is cell I3. So we're gonna say I3 and we need to strict the column movement. So we write the dollar sign. So we're gonna say I3 minus today's date is less than 30. So if we are less than 30 days away and we need to put all of that between parentheses here. So it gets all calculated before it gets compared to 30. Okay. So if we are less than 30 days away from the contract ending date, apply the format that we're going to put in here. And that's going to be applied for the whole row, by the way, because we selected the conditional formatting to be applied to the whole table. So we click on format here and um, we can fill that with a, let's say maybe orange. Yeah, something orange like that. Uh, once we hit OK, you can see that the second row has been highlighted here. Why? Because we are 19 days only from the end of uh, the contract. So if you change that and make it um, a bit further, uh, more than one month, the coloring here will disappear basically. Let's say we're gonna go with uh, 5th or May 3rd, 2019. Okay. And as you can see here, the color has disappeared because we are 50 days away from the contract in the date. So this is what I wanted to show you in this short video. Hope you guys like it. And uh, this, um, I'm going to be doing similar videos like this for HR. Uh, whenever I think of something, find it useful maybe for you guys, I'll put it through. Thank you so much.